So there's this narrative going around right now that Twitter is actually a dead company, that it's already too far gone and it has no chance of redemption. And this really is present everywhere. If you pay attention to the wrong sort of spaces, then according to them, they have no security team at all. They have no moderation team. But really, it's just a bare bones staff that won't be able to maintain it for any kind of time at all. And that even ad companies, companies which would usually give their advertising dollars to Twitter, well, they're pulling out as well. And then there's also lots of people claiming that they're moving to Mastodon, which is this weird and pretty pitiful EU alternative. Now, this goes hand in hand and along with this mainstream narrative that freedom of speech is bad, that you don't need to be able to say what you want and that there is no bad outcome that can come from this that really a nanny state or a government or some kind of authority that regulates what you can say and what other people can't say is a good thing that elon's the worst person in the world and that twitter is dying now, contrary to what a lot of people say, this is not just a couple people tweeting or making YouTube videos about it. This is affecting real world institutions and life around every single country. There are universities here in the UK which are sending emails out to their staff and their students telling them to delete Twitter and to go over to this EU alternative called Mastodon, which should really say enough about just how hard the mainstream is trying to push this narrative. Now, I know this is a finance channel, so you're expecting me to talk about finance. And don't worry, this is related to that because really this is an incredibly silly idea to believe and it gets especially dangerous when we're coming from an investing point of view when it's actually your money at stake and not these institutions. Of course, right now, as we speak, Twitter is a private company, so I don't have any shares in them, and I sincerely doubt that you do either. The only people that really do are Elon and his buddies, but it is getting more and more common these days for people to just look at optics and just to take a quick gander at YouTube and Twitter to see what the sentiment regarding a business is, and that is basically their entire investment thesis, i.e. they say something like, Twitter is going to fail because Elon has bought it, and so maybe you should go out and short something else related to Elon, something like Tesla, because if he's running Twitter into the ground, then surely he must be running his other businesses into the ground as well. Another very similar idea that's being pushed is that Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook are evil companies and that everyone in the world hates them. So surely you should go out and short Meta and you'll make yourselves millions. And this is an incredibly dangerous idea. We're actually going to speak, I'm writing a video as we speak about Meta in its entirety that's going to go out in a couple of weeks. And today we're going to speak mostly just about this idea regarding Twitter and why investments should be based on facts and not on feelings at all. Now, right off the bat, the facts surrounding Twitter and its functioning as a business, it's actually doing fine and even better than it was literally just a couple of months ago before Elon got his hands on it. The first thing to note is that daily active users of Twitter are going up and they've been hitting their highest ever levels pretty much day after day for the last few weeks. And this is coming after Twitter went to court over this issue because they were lying about their daily active users trying to defraud their investors for years because their performance, their results were so poor and they're already breaking those previous records. Of course, we've heard a lot of things about Twitter being an advertising company and about how censoring free speech is essential if you're going to compete for ad space with a company like Google or Facebook. But still, ads are running all over Twitter and that isn't going to stop anytime soon because as some companies leave, the prices for those ads cost per clicks will go down and so new entrants will enter the market. We've seen a lot of things and a lot of noise made about about something like 75% of Twitter staff leaving the company again over just a couple of months or so. But the truth is the website isn't crashing. The app isn't crashing. It's just as fast or slow as it's ever been. There hasn't been any data thefts or any hacks. And so the idea that these were essential employees really doesn't stay up to standard at all, especially considering how more innovation has happened with Twitter regarding things like Twitter Blue than we had seen over the last three or four years years when Twitter had four times the staff. Let's also not forget the fact that these employees, these software engineers who really weren't doing a lot of work for their actual money, them being laid off is probably going to save Twitter in excess of 1 billion US dollars every year or so. Another big issue and things that people have been making a lot of noise about is Twitter Blue, the system whereby you no longer just have to be a very subpar a journalist working for some unknown online journalism website, you can now just go out and buy your Twitter blue for $8 a month to verify your identity. And of course, as this news came out, 
every single person with one of these blue check marks threw up a hissy fit and they tried to get this idea cancelled and ruined because they wanted that elite status. They wanted to be able to say that they had the blue tick and you didn't because it gives them that authority. And of course, they all made the claim that if they went through with this, if Elon put this into action, they would of course not pay their $8 a month and they would forfeit their blue ticks. But all of these celebrities did actually pay it because of course they did. It's a status symbol and it's an incredibly cheap one to have at that. The point is here that these are all facts about Twitter's business and none of them are actually inherently bad and yet still the mainstream narrative is incredibly negative for this company and for Elon in this space. Really, there's this very strong Silicon Valley culture of bureaucracy for bureaucracy's sake, and many people will claim that it isn't true, but it really is, at least in this day and age. Go back a few years and WhatsApp, the messaging service, was sold for 16 billion US dollars while it had only 50 employees. Twitter, on the other hand, just a couple of months ago, was sold for 44 billion US dollars with almost 10,000 employees. And now 75% of that workforce has been fired and nothing has gone wrong with Twitter. So what were those people doing day to day? Well, the logical answer is nothing. Now you probably walk around with a wallet that looks a bit like this. Old, thick, heavy, and made of leather. Frankly, there had to be a better way to store cards and cash. And actually it turns out there is thanks to Ridge Wallet. It's sleek and robust, and yet it can still hold everything that I need at just a fraction of the size of my old wallet, and yet I've still got all my cards and cash in it. They've even now got a key holder as well to tidy and sleeken that up too, so get the best offer available by clicking the link down below in the description and going to ridge.com slash stoic. Of course, there are some other big changes surrounding Twitter as well. Some are cancelled people are getting uncancelled. The two biggest ones, in my opinion, are Andrew Tate, that controversial you know, Manosphere type guy who's very popular with young men. And of course, Donald Trump, the former president of the United States, who has now been reinstated to Twitter. Of course, this is incredibly annoying to people who like deplatforming their opponents and like to not have to justify their opinions. They just want what they say to be taken as gospel. And a brilliant example of this is Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London who's been running London into the ground with us hitting record murders, record stabbings, rapes and violent crimes every single month. The city is incredibly dangerous right now. I know I live here full time. This is literally my home. And yet he cares more about Twitter and making sure that Donald Trump can't tweet something than he does about his own citizens dying in his city. Of course, that's not even mentioning the total hypocrisy you see with this tweet here. Free speech is important, except when I don't like it. When you say something I don't like, I really don't think you need any kind of free speech. Guess what, Sadiq? That isn't free speech. Another example of this sort of woke virtue signaling surrounding Twitter is this TikTok account I saw called America is the Bad Place, which is just dedicated to hating on America by some weird European guy. I think he's probably British, but he's so obsessed with America and how he doesn't like their culture that he's made it his entire personality. Now, this guy is right. Those regulations do exist within the EU, but he's conveniently forgetting the fact that Elon would never buy an EU company like that because it would never grow in the EU because of those regulations. The only successful tech company that's come out of Europe over the last decade has been Wirecard, which was just Enron 2.0. It was just a massive fraud connected to criminal empires. And this has a real direct impact on the wealth of countries all across Europe. To be in the top 1% of income uh, earners in the EU, you need under 100,000 US dollars of income. To be in the top 1% in America, you need about $500,000. And as you go to smaller, more streamlined states with less regulation, less bureaucracy, less taxation, well, the number just keeps going higher because the people just keep getting richer. In the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, or somewhere like Singapore, you need almost 1 million US dollars a year to reach that 1% mark. That means if you're earning 100,000 US dollars and you're put in a room with 100 other random Europeans, you're probably going to be the richest person in there. Whereas if you did that somewhere like Singapore, well, you wouldn't even crack the top 15 or 20%. The simple fact is that these regulations that people are claiming are just outright good ideas, they have downsides as well. Yes, they do improve working conditions and there is a trade-off to be had, but they make people poorer. Now, one of the specific things that this guy was rallying against and a lot of other people are rallying against as well is Twitter staff complaining that their promises of a better severance package have not been met. Now, to clarify here, Parag, who was the previous CEO back before Elon bought the company, he came out and he made a bunch of promises to these employees for what will happen when someone else buys the company and fires him as CEO. 
Of course, he had no authority at all to make those promises. And now all of these people, and especially the media online, are incredibly surprised that Elon isn't honoring someone else's promises. The simple fact is here that he's met the requirements laid out to him by the law and he will face no real consequences because of this other than some various hit piece that comes out from a site like the New York Times. At the end of the day, no one should really care if this actually works for Elon Musk or not though, if he makes money from Twitter or if he loses money from Twitter, because the fact is that he's the one taking the risk here, not us. That means that if he manages to make this work, if he makes Twitter very profitable, he will make lots of money and he will be proven right regardless of what the mainstream narrative says. On the other hand, if he fails, if he really does drive all the advertising away from Twitter and he isn't able to replace that income with Twitter Blue subscriptions, then he will lose the money that he put up and that will be the punishment that he serves for that, losing the capital he invested because this is a capitalist system and the silly leftists on TikTok complaining about him, well, they won't make any difference at all. In a bit of a personal anecdote, I spoke with a friend of mine about SpaceX and his claim was essentially that SpaceX is a stupid idea, it doesn't even work, he studied engineering so he knew what was right obviously, and that it will be unprofitable and no one should celebrate Elon for creating SpaceX. Now during this entire conversation, he'd never stopped to consider what role the market plays here and I explained to him in very simple terms that he doesn't get to decide if it's profitable or not, the market does. He doesn't get to decide if it's cheaper to transport things to space using SpaceX's systems than others, the market gets to decide that and the exact same is true here for Twitter. Frankly, you should even be ignoring what I'm saying here and ignoring my opinion when it comes to whether or not Twitter is going to succeed because all that actually matters here is the market. It's buying pressure and selling pressure. It's demand and supply. And as of right now, it does look like the market is fine. We are still seeing these adverts on Twitter, so they are still driving advertising revenue. I have taken quick looks and it seems that their cost per clicks are just as high as they've ever been. So on the surface, it doesn't seem like they've lost any significant amount of demand for that. Their daily active users numbers, they are increasing, their staff costs are down by 75% and yet the company is still functioning in its entirety. I think they're likely to end up with millions of new Twitter Blue users paying $8 a month to get this status from the blue tick, which means millions more dollars of monthly recurring revenue. Now, all of these ideas are apparently bad according to the media and to these tweeters who just really want and seek Elon to fail. All of these, though, are good for the balance sheet of Twitter. They're good for the business of Twitter. And yet so many people are still claiming that this is some kind of game over and there's no chance in hell for them. I'm sorry if this video was a little bit off topic or different than usual. I really didn't have time to put together a full video today. So I thought I would just very quickly speak to you all on a bit more of a personal level without an actual script and things like that. And at the point I'm just trying to get across of this with this whole Twitter ordeal is that opinions don't actually matter. We've seen Hollywood chase woke identity politics for a long time now, and it hasn't been doing them well. Marvel films and these sort of you know, feminist empowerment films that no one actually wants to watch, they're performing really poorly at the box office, especially when you consider just how successful they were a few years ago. We've seen this with Netflix as well. They've been paying for and putting out, frankly, awful shows which seek to just please a tiny vocal minority of people on Twitter or YouTube when that isn't where the money lies. Businesses should be focused on just that, their business. They should be focused on their customers, what their customers want and how they can service their needs and make a profit while doing so. Elon Musk is, in my opinion, taking Twitter in that direction. And I think we as investors, as people interested in finance and business and economics, we should strive to focus on these actual metrics which make or break businesses, not on the type of things which make or break celebrities because at the end of the day, that's all that really matters here. Don't allow a vocal minority to capture the media and to tell you when a business is failing. Look at their balance sheet, look at their quarterly reports, look at their share price, look at what other investors are doing, but don't look at what pundits and silly media officials have to say on Twitter about why they think the website is dying. If you like this kind of more honest and open format where I talk without any risk of censorship, then please check out Stoic Financial Freedom in the description down below. There's going to be a load of lessons on investing in finance explaining everything that I can't say here on YouTube. We're running a November only pre-sale and it ends at the end of November and we've only got eight slots left as well and it's 60% off. So if you want to hear more words like this from me, then go and check that out. Link as always will be down in the description. Thank you all for the support and until next time, stay stoic.